You know, many legends have come out of the old west. Some true, some false, and some just plain cockamamie. Like the famous tale of a stagecoach that was burned to the ground by Apaches. And the only survivor was a tiny infant and his little teddy bear. Now, many times Indians have found little babies and brought them up as their own. And then there are stories of wolves finding a child and raising it in the wolf pack. But nobody wanted this baby. Nobody loved him. So this little baby grew up loving nobody. And he became the meanest man in the whole West. Evil Roy Slade. Evil Roy Slade would howl at the darkness. Scary so bad he'd cause day to break. Then evil Roy Slade would scramble Spit out the shade. He'll never be as popular as Billy the Kid or Jesse. <laughs> And so evil Roy Slade became the most famous outlaw in the West, spreading havoc wherever he rode. Oddly enough, most of the things that evil Roy destroyed was a property of one fella, Nelson L. Stew, president of Western Express, powerful, ruthless, and kind of short. And finally, there's the robbery of the train shipment to Laredo. Slade and his gang got away with $5,000 plus the train whistle. Train whistle? You mean he stole a train whistle? Report says a Slade liked the toot toot sound. Get back to your teletype and find out where Slade is and find out what banks we have in that particular area. Yes, sir, yes, sir. Like the toot toot sound. Custer, that villain is going to ruin me unless I catch him. <laughs> And you know what else, Custer? A lot of people think I'm too old to run Western Express. <laughs> You're the only one who really understands me. <laughs> hi, Uncle Nelson. Hi, Uncle Nelson. Until you catch evil Roy Slade, you can't say, hi, Uncle Nelson. Now get out of my sight, you coward. I'm not a coward, Uncle Nelson. You're not a coward, huh? What do you call a nephew who rode side saddle until he was 24? What do you call a nephew who won't form a posse unless it's daytime because he's afraid of the dark? Why do you think that I made you an agent of Western Express? Why do you think I pinned that on you? To hold your pants up? Some folks say I look good riding in a parade, huh? I didn't come here to watch you in a parade. I came here to get Evil Roy Slade. I got a message about that right here. Give it to me! That's the answer from Bing Bell. Somebody at the door? That's his name, stupid. I've asked ex-marshal Bell to come out of retirement. This is his answer. Hmm. Looks like a firm no. Well, I'll have to get somebody else. No outlaw is gonna bankrupt the Western Express. I am Western Express. I built the West from my mansion in the East with sweat and toil. Do you see this hand? You see that stubby index finger? Do you know how I got it? Do you? I wore it down, tapping out messages on my telegraph key. How to build Western Express and new frontiers. Men often sit around the campfire and sing about your stubby index finger, Unc. Uh, stubby index finger, tapping out your code. Stubby index mm -hmm. finger, looking mm -hmm. like a toad. Uh, shut up! Oh. 
Excuse me, here's a list of Western Express stations in the area where Slade is now, sir. Thank you. All right, back to your telegraph key. You with your yes, sir. perfect index finger. Now, where could he be now? And this here is Evil Roy's gang. A mean and cocky bunch. Not the kind of fellas you'd invite home to dinner. Unless you liked eating with your hands up. I like that sound. Give me money. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Make all them presidents' faces on top. I like neatness. Absolutely. I like ruby red lips, too. Your ruby red lips taste like prairie dust. Still got your bandana on, boss. You telling me what I got on? I know what I got on. I've been dressing my body all by myself for years. Ain't nobody ever helped me. Did you know I pinned my own diapers on? I know that. The minute campfires often sing about it. That and the stubby index finger song. I hired you as a killer, not a fashion designer. Now you continue your robbing while I continue my kissing. Folks, just get whatever you feel you can. I think you can feel a little better than that, brother. Hallelujah. Somebody coming, boss. Mrs. Finders and... Well, you're just in time for the party, folks. Say, I know who she is. You miss Betsy Potter. I seen your picture in the paper when you won the Miss Frontier contest. It's an honor to rob you, ma'am. Huh? I know you, you slimy varmint. Evil Roy Slade. Always flattered to be recognized. You are the infamous Evil Roy Slade? <sighs> Makes me sad just to look at you. You don't like what I got on either? I thought this is spiffy outfit. I'm sad that there's so much evil in your heart. It's in my heart and in my hands and in my eyes and a lot in my feet. I love kicking. Betsy, don't get any ideas of trying to reform this coyote. Mind if I kill your ma so we can talk in peace? But please don't. Lock her in a vault, Patch. Hey, come on, Grandma! Get your hands <laughs> off of me! I was just doing my kissing the victims part of the hold. It's your turn. slap your face. That isn't the way a gentleman acts. However, I take pity on you because you're uncivilized and nobody ever taught you good manners. You know something? I like you. You got a good head on your shoulders. You got a good body under your shoulders. You live around here? I've been going to school in Boston and I just came home to join my mother. It's closing time, boss. Here comes the sheriff. I got to write down this gal's address. Where's the pen? There's the pen. You got paper? Anybody got paper? You got any paper? Here's paper. Write your address on this money. That way I won't lose it. She can write.
Let's go, boys. Oh, that poor man. He's just starved for affection because of his evil life. But I'm sure that uh, underneath that black exterior, I could find something good. I forgot my new pen! Doggy. He he daddy little doggy. He Hi, Uncle Nelson. Huh? We just got a report. Slade robbed the banks. Willow Bend, Oak Bend, Oh, Bend. cat. Well, there's only one thing left to do now. I'm gonna have to do it again. Try to get the only lawman I know that can really handle Slade. Ah, not you. Go on, get out of my sight. I don't want to lay eyes on you again. Come back when there's a parade. But I'm your own kin. You're no kin of mine. Custer, Custer here. He, he, daddy's only kin. Yeah. Boss? Yes, sir. Want to send another telegram to Bing Bell? Somebody at the door? That happens to be his name. Now, residing in retirement in old San Francisco was another living legend, ex-marshal Bing Bell, superstar. My little cabin. That home, sweet home of mine And I look into the sunset How my soft blue eyes will shine I stand beneath the pines And sing my song That old tree won't climb for long Mr. Bing, sir. Mr. Bing. To Mr. Bing Bell, I, Nelson L. Stuhl, appeal to you as an American. Western Express is the backbone of America. It is your duty as an American, and also for the $20,000 I am now offering to come here and put an end to evil Roy Slade and... Oh, 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 he's criminal. Why? Oh, hot, hot. Meanwhile, in the less elaborate abode of evil Roy... The bullet's almost out, Roy. Don't time pace face while you're having fun. Hey. Nice work, Floozy. Flossie. My name is Flossie. I'm going to deal this one. Boss, some of the horses lost their shoes in that getaway. Well, get the blacksmith. Smith? Yeah, yeah, I know. Get the horses. I'm open for a hundred dollars. I'm in. I'm out. Everybody's in. Hundred dollars. How many cards you want, preacher? Three. How many cards you want, Snake? I'll stick with these. Take a card. No, I got a perfect hand. Take a card. Take one. Shouldn't have taken one. <laughs> How about you? I'll take three. I'm gonna take two cards. I'm gonna take another one. One more. That's good. I'm gonna bet a hundred dollars. I'm in. Everybody's in. Put it all in. Everything. What do you got? Nothing. How about you? What do you got? I got kings with an ace. I got threes with a gun. Oh, you win. Hey, he's lucky. Now, he's no, sure he's lucky. He's lucky. He's lucky. He's lucky. He's lucky. I don't want to play anymore. Oh. Watch my money, Christian. Watch it. Don't touch it. Something's on my mind and it hurts my head. I know what's on your mind. 
I heard about that highfalutin Boston hussy you met in the bank. Honey, you got pierced ears? No. Shut up or you will. <laughs> Stubby index finger Tapping out a cold Stubby index finger Looking like a toad Stubby index finger Tapping out your cold And please, dear Lord, don't let nobody sneak up and shoot me in the back while I'm shooting at someone in the front. Amen. Pretty good, boss. Yeah, let's see that broken tooth. She's gonna like that. And uh, see, yeah, that scar on your ear, rope burn on your neck. You got some nice features, boss. Yeah, that's why they got my picture up all over. Oh, boss, listen, maybe she's got a friend for me and we could double. Shut up and keep your eyes peeled or I'll peel them for you. Guess who? <laughs> Howdy. I was in the neighborhood. Did I scare you? No, not really. Oh, I scare most people. You do? Yeah. Do you think the people you scare like it? I don't know. I never I never ask them. I, there's always too much yelling and screaming going on. Ain't no time for chit-chat. Why? I don't know. Just trying to get to know you. You are? Well, I gotta be going. Oh, wait. Um, Why don't you sit for a minute? Sure, it's safe. I've seen a lot of my gang meet their makers swinging back and forth like that. Oh, Roy, you don't have to talk mean around me. Honest, you don't. Okay. Okay, I won't talk mean. I think I got anything to say uh, if it ain't something mean. Roy, I always try to look for the good in people. Now, you must have one nice thought. Oh, uh, nice. Let me see. Uh, you sure come up with some toughies. A memory? A moment of sweetness? Well, uh, today, uh, uh, no, it's yesterday when I, when I kissed you. Uh, I don't know what nice is, but uh, I, I was uh, I was different from uh, any anything I ever felt. So uh, I reckon that was nice. I felt it too. I was expecting to feel mean hatred from your lips, but when you kissed me, it was the nicest thing that ever happened to me. Maybe I'm just a rotten person with nice lips. <laughs> no, I think it meant more than that. But it's hard to tell from just one kiss. Maybe we ought to try it again, just to find out. Well, I don't know. I mean, I don't know you very well, and... Yesterday, I was forced into it, yeah, but... make you feel more comfortable, I could stick a gun in your ribs. No. Let's just try it regular. All right. <sighs> yep. I reckon that's what nice is was nice for me, too. Oh, but it'll never work. 
I mean, I want to I wanna help people, and, well, you want to rob them. With a little effort, you could change. Oh, I'm sorry, Roy. If you want to see me again, you'll just have to give up being an outlaw. Retire? I'm in my prime. I worked a lot of hard years to get to the bottom. Well, I want a bow who'll give me a normal life. And you're always on the run. I ain't always on the run. Hey, Evil Roy. I gotta run. There's somebody coming. Kill him. It's a woman. Wound her. Get off my property, you weasel. Oh, it's Ma. Oh, don't hurt her. Hold it, Snake. Oh, shucks. It's been weeks since I shot a woman. If I ever so much as see you on this property again, I'm going to fill you so full of buckshot, you'll whistle when you walk. But you better go, Roy. Remember what I said. Okay. What'd you say? I'd be proud to see you again if you'd change your mind and lead a decent life. I had never changed my mind before. Does it hurt? Only at first. I love you, Roy. Nobody ever said that to me before. Move, buzzard breath! That's been said to me before. I got a lot to think over. You be hearing from me, honey. Come on, Betsy. What took you so long? She wanted me to meet her mother. Hey, boss, ain't you coming back to the hideout? In the morning. I gotta go talk to some of my childhood friends. I'm sorry I had to get you all together without any dead bodies around, but I needed you. You see, things are going real good for me right now. I'm very successful. I got a lot of fame and fortune. But you see, now I got to decide whether I want to give it all up for the love of the prettiest live body you ever did see. Her name's Betsy, and I met her when we was robbing a bank. And I kissed them red ruby lips of hers, and uh, it was good. It was, uh, it was nice. You know what nice is? Well, just supposing there's a whole herd of dead cattle just dropped right on the desert just for you. <laughs> That's nice. That's what it means. Betsy, you might as well forget about that no-account villain. I know his type. You ain't ever gonna hear from him again. Ah. What are you doing? I'm saving Roy's letters. No more arguing. I done made up my mind. I'm gonna break up this gang, divvy up a loot, take my share, and start a new life. Ah, oh, with your stuck-up school marm. Hmm. Don't ever talk that way about Betsy. Roy, don't do this to me. I, I love you. You've got no right to leave me alone. Maybe you're right. All right, boys, who wants Flossie? I do. I do. Oh! You want her? Excuse me, sir. You want Flossie? You're kind of short. Uh, no, sir, I have something to tell you, sir. You were discussing the sharing of the loot, sir, Where's and... the rest of your hat? That's all there is, sir. You get a full hat like everybody else. Yes, sir. Now about the money... I want 50000 divvy up the rest. Well... The thing is, sir, we have nothing to divvy up. You see that zero, sir? It means we have no money, nothing. No, 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 no. you don't understand. I need $50,000 to start off a new life with Betsy. That's what I want, $50,000. Yes, sir, that's what I want you to have, but we have no money. You see those numbers? Those are our expenses, wasted bullets. It costs about... $300 extra, sir, every time you shoot up a town. And look at this, sir. $7,000 in spilled whiskey this year. It all adds up. You see that blank space right there? Yes, sir. I want you to write $50,000 down there. You make a five, 
and some zeros, and you make get fifty thousand dollars. <laughs> I like the way you make them zeros. They're closed at the top. I like it. They're, they're, they're neat. Yeah, that's good. Well, boys, they got me $50,000. Boys, man, that's good. Where is the money you got marked down in that book, Randolph? I don't have it, sir. You owe me $50,000 and you ain't got it? Where am I going to get my money? You could rob the Western Express stage as it comes through the pass. There'll be $63,000 in gold plus whatever's on the passengers' persons. It will come through about 515. You could put two men on one end of the pass, three men on the other, have two hidden at the fork, and station one look out on the rocks. All right, boys. You heard my plan. Let's get ready. Hey, that's a good idea, Slate. Hey, that's good, Slate. That's great. <laughs> That's right, Mr. Stool. Evil Roy is going to have men at both ends of Rivers Pass. My dear, I can't tell you what a service you've done for Western Express and me. Who is Western Express? We've needed this. I'll tell you that after being refused once again by the great lawman Bing Bell. Is that the door? That's his name, dear. <laughs> You'll share in the honor when we bring in this horrible villain. You can ride in my parade. Oh, thank you. Oh, say, you're kind of cute. <laughs> hey, break it up. Break it up. We've got to make a plan. Now, Custer Evil Roy Slade is finally going to get his. <laughs> now, here's what I want you to do, Floozy. Flossy. All of you boys realize that this is my last job. You're looking at a man about to retire. Oh, no, evil. Uh, boss, uh, in honor of your retirement, I'd, I'd like to give you this here gold watch. Now, uh, <clears throat> me and, and, and Smith here and, and Patches, we's uh, uh, men of different faiths. We banded together and we beat the tar out of Riley here and took his watch for you. Let's have a speech, lad. I'm touched, boys. Not enough to say thanks, but uh, I am touched. As a matter of fact, I got something for you guys here. Some of my old wanted posters. I, I autographed them. Hey, that's nice. Pass them out, Snake. Yep. This is it. We've been together a lot of years. And I got to say, I ain't never gotten to know any of you guys at all. What's your name? Patch. I've been with you now for six years. I saved your life once up in Loganville. Give him another poster. Oh, thanks, Slade. Boys, as we stand here, ready to rob our last stage, I want you to remember the five most important things that I taught you. Sneaking, lying, arrogance, dirtiness, and Evils. Put them all together, and they spell slave. Yeah, that's right. yeah. Yeah. Enough warmth. <laughs> I never saw so many badges. What do they have in a lawman's convention? Old stagecoach full of good guys. Getting sick to my stomach. They even got midgets. Aim for their little hearts. He ain't got a chance, boss. <laughs> With him here, maybe we do.
ocean. All we want is evil Roy. My uncle's offering $500 in freedom to any of you who'll turn on your boss. Don't worry, boss. I'll stick with you. Don't be an idiot. That man's offering you $500. Turn on me! Didn't I ever teach you nothing? Oh, we got you now, Mr. Evil. You better throw your guns down on the ground, okay? I'll throw down my guns. I'll give up. I'm coming. Oh, what's to become of me? I don't know. You got me. I'm yours. Yeah! <laughs> shoot me. You'll need a horse to get away. And I have one near here. I'll trade you my horse if you'll spare my life. I don't make deals. Oh, go ahead. I have no life anyway. The West is a hard place for a short person. I'm too small to rope cattle. And there ain't no call for roping gophers. Best job I ever had was when I rode with Wyatt Earp. On his lap. I'm a lonely man. I know lonely. I know what it is to be an outcast. You, you, you ain't a bad little guy. I, I tell you what, you give me your horse, I'll let you go. I must have hit my head in that fall. It's all swelled up. That's my hat. Don't take advantage of my good nature, Tiny. One more funny hat trick and I'm gonna stuff you in my holster and smother you. Now let's get that horse. Sorry I'm late, honey, but I kinda dragged my heels getting here. Evil Roy, are you all right? I'm fit as a fiddle. But you look battered and beaten. You said you quit fighting. Well, I was just finishing up some business, but I got the money to retire, honey. Oh. Look at that. Roy, you stole this. They'll be after you. Oh, well, they ain't never gonna catch me. Now give me a kiss. I had a hard day and my mouth's dry. Let's step inside where I'll be a little more comfortable. This ain't the best time to bring that up, honey. Here, load my gun. You better give up. We outnumber you. Come on out, Slade! You hurt one hair on my daughter, you'll get a belly full of lead for your supper. That's my ma. She's in the posse. Yeah, everybody turns on you sooner or later. I'm gonna come on out, all right, with my guns blazing. Here, give me my other gun. I'll see you later. Pow! 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 Why am I going pow pow? Because this ain't going pow pow. Look on page nine, Roy. It better be a stick of dynamite on page nine. Read what it says. I 
can't read, you dumb love of my life. It says thou shalt not kill. Hear that, boys? That's what it says. Thou shalt not kill. Get them little hooves moving. Come on, you toy horse. Get going. I trusted you, Betsy. Uh, I haven't let you down, Roy. I did it for your own good. I'll mention that to the hangman. You did the right thing, honey. I learned two valuable lessons a day. Never trust a pretty girl or a lonely midget. <laughs> they got him. They got evil Roy. Captured him and half his horse. This ain't the real parade, folks. The big one will be right after Slade's dead. <laughs> I'm gonna have a new suit and everything. Wake me up in time for the hanging. The rope will wake you up. Tell you something you don't know. It was Flossie who squealed on you. All my pupils learn good. Yeah. Tell you something else you don't know. I think Flossie likes me. Good. She likes it when you blow in her left ear. Yeah? Ah, Clifford! You did a right fine job. You managed to keep up with the posse during the entire capture. Flossie! Mm. What are you doing here with my uncle? She's with the firm now. Public relations. Mm. What have you got to say about it? She likes it when you're blowing her left ear. Public relations. Ah, it's amazing how quickly you catch on. <laughs> Ma. Well, Mr. Slade. We finally meet up after all. Who are you, Squatty? I am Western Express. Your gang cost my company over a million dollars, shot over a hundred of my men. Do you know how many widows there are in Western Express? Our company picnics are depressing. Slade, have you ever seen 30 widows in a sack race? It's the most... Don't point your knuckle at me, short stuff. Roy! I'm here, Roy! I'm here comes Miss Holier Than Thou. I'm with you. Oh, Mr. Stool, your word could go a long way towards getting Roy pardoned. Pardoned? <laughs> yes. If we prove he was a victim of society, a deprived child, then I know we can convince the jury not to hang him. Can, you couldn't convince the jury to stop laughing, honey. <laughs> well, I know we'll have to serve a little time, but with my love and psychiatric help... That's a good thought, dear, but forget about it. This territory wants Slade's blood. Clifford! Yes, so Clifford! Tickets, please. Tickets. Two good ones right on the aisle down front for the hanging, dear. We're going to have some entertainment right after it, too. Clifford, you did hire the accordionist, didn't oh, you? Oh, yes, sir. Hanging? Yes. <laughs> You're not giving him a fair trial or anything? Yeah, we're going to give him a fair trial, dear. We even got him a real judge. Judge Lowe! Oh, he's guilty. I am. Roy, what have I done? I've thrown you to these jackals. Don't you worry about it, honey. It's getting harder all the time to tell the good guys from the bad guys. I forgive you. Get her out of here, Clifford. Come on, move her. Oh, Roy, I love you. Get her out. Oh, I always will. Stu, I'm afraid I'm going to have to spoil that little party of yours. What do you mean, spoil my little party? Well, now I know my sweet dumpling really loves me. There ain't a power on earth to keep me inside this cell. Ha <laughs> oh, ha! All right, huh? Let me tell you something, Slade. We're gonna have ourselves one fine hanging. We're gonna have rides and balloons. Yeah, we're gonna have a couple of preliminary hangings before the main event. And my company's gonna make all the profits. I'm even gonna start a publicity campaign that you're having a feud with a hangman. So we'll have a bigger gate. What do you think about that? <laughs> you know something, Stu? What? I think you're stupid. <laughs> <laughs> I'm so stupid that I'm going to put one of my most trusted agents in charge of you to watch you. Clifford? Yes, Unc? Tie Custer in front of this here cell. Hey, Lou, you, you bringing your wife to the hanging tomorrow? You bet. 
She's packing a big lunch for me and the kids, and we're coming over right after church. <laughs> All right, folks, get him before they're gone. Genuine Evil Roy Slade hanging dolls. Yes, sir, fully equipped with the head that comes right off for the hanging. Hey, hey, you want one? Hey, Slade, you want home, I brought someone to see you. A man in a dress? What do I want to see a man in a dress for? This is a priest. Oh, <laughs> a priest? I ain't never seen one before. Sorry, Mother. Uh, it's Father. Oh, that dress keeps throwing me off. Would you like to confess your sins before you die, my son? <laughs> I ain't got any intention of dying. Come on in. I'd like to get a few things off my chest before I marry Betsy. I figure I didn't commit any real big sins till I was about four years old. Let me out of here! I can't take it anymore! I ain't even up to my 21st birthday. <laughs> Tomorrow's the big day, Slade. Thousands of people are coming to your hanging. We sold every seat. Every hotel room in town is full. I always was a crowd pleaser. Right this way, gentlemen. Right this way. Oh, this way. Oh, this way. Oh, this way. Who are all them? These are the heads of wax museums from all over the world. Mr. Stool is selling them statues of you. You got that stubby index figure and a lot of pies. Get the, the profile here. And some of my teeth. Mm -hmm. Hey, Clifford, ain't you gonna untie my hands for my last meal? <laughs> Nothing doing. Now you shut your evil mouth. I'm trying to figure out what hat to wear when I lead you to the gallows. Oh, that one looks good, but don't match my horse. something like just for fun, I'm going to show you the file I keep on all my employees. <laughs> I learned two valuable lessons today. Never trust a dumb nephew or a slobbery bulldog. We're going to rest here and then hightail it out at dawn. All right, Roy. You sure look good in my old clothes, honey. I got a t-shirt I'd like you to try on later. <laughs> oh, Roy, what are our lives going to be like? Always on the run, hiding from everybody? Afraid to hold our heads up like decent citizens? You gonna turn me in again? That's not what I meant. I know I was wrong to do that. You can't get a fair trial around here. Too many people know you. You need a fresh start. Where am I gonna find that? I'm very well known. My picture's up on the best trees. Boston. We'll go to Boston. Boston? I don't know nobody in Boston. I ain't never been there. But that's just it. It's perfect. I went to school there, and, and I have relatives who'll put us up, and you could get a job and learn a trade, pay taxes. I, I, I don't want to go to Boston, no sissy town like that. Oh, we could be so safe there in our little house, Roy. I know I can change you, Roy, because I love you. A 
They got nice houses in Boston. Mm-hmm. Indoor toilets. You could change your name and everything. They'd never find us. Change my name? Uh-huh. Brand new name and a brand new life. With me. Stop confusing me, Betsy. Ah. Let, let, let's go to sleep and I'll think about it. All right, Roy. You're the boss. Darn girl makes me do a lot of thinking. Let me see your brand new name. Evil John Ferguson. No. Evil Fred Nolan. No. Evil E. Rich. <laughs> nah. What do you think? You're too dumb. Do we take him in, Unc? Yep. In a box. Don't shoot my dog! Slade. My daughter's gone off with that Slade to Boston. Boston. And I look into the sunset. How my Mr. Bing. Someone to see you. Bingy. <laughs> Sir. <laughs> you are worse than Mr. Bing. Uh, someone to see you, beautiful dreamer. When I reach my little cabin. Excuse me for bothering your wonderful self, Mr. Bell, but my uncle, uh, Nelson L. Still, sent me. We have reason to believe that evil Roy Slade is in Boston. And my uncle thought you'd like Boston. It being so cultural and all, what with them parks and museums and, and walks on, on Saturdays and Sundays, and it's, it, it's never hot in Boston, you know. Stop cracking your knuckles, Harry. It'll be the baby. Oh, Alice, what time are they coming? Cousin Betsy's telegram just said they'd be here sometime today. When you're on the run, it's difficult to keep an accurate schedule. I don't like this, Alice. I do not like it. Why do we have to hire a gunman, a robber, an outlaw? I don't complain when your mother visits. D Alice, you don't understand. This is a respectable house. And I... <gasps> there they are. They're here? Harry. What? Let's hide no. and give them a surprise. Oh, no, no. Come no, on, no, darling. Please, I don't... Harry, oh. my cousin came all the way Yeah, but I, I don't hide. I'm not please, the hiding darling. kind. It'll be fun. No, She'll I'm not... love it. It'll mean so please, much to her, no, darling. I'm... Please, dance You don't understand. Me. Alice, I... Please... Come in! Uh, don't come in. Don't come in, please. No, here. Alice! Harry! Surprise! Good boy, Ulysses. Go to sleep. My, this certainly is nice cake. Yeah, if you can pick the bullets out. Oh, I'm sorry if we caused you any trouble, Cousin Harry. Yeah, but look, you see, I, I, I'm a shoe salesman. Uh, how am I supposed to hold a shoehorn in a wounded hand? You're lucky you got a hand. Huh? Roy, it's been a long trip, and we traveled all the way east underneath the train. Train. <laughs> We've seen the bottom half of most of America. America. <laughs> What's that whistle? What's that whistle? Oh, no, Boy. not again. Not again. Shut it. Some kind of engine trick. It's a tea kettle, Mr. Slade. It's just a tea kettle. A tea kettle? It whistles when it's ready. A tea kettle, it whistles. What else you got around here? Cups that cough? <laughs> Give me some tea. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's not going to be easy, but uh, I think the city will be good for Roy. I'm taking him tomorrow to see Logan Delp. Logan Delp, the psychiatrist? Psychiatrist? What's that? I thought you said he's a friend. Well, he is, Roy. 
Uh, uh, you've got to go to work now, Harry. Yeah, yeah I gotta go to work. Well, Come on. Bye. I'll see you. Bye. Bye. Harry so. don't like me. Alice don't like me. I don't like this funny tea kettle. Well, you just have to try harder to make friends. Okay, I'll try. Maybe, maybe I could shake Harry by the collar till he says he's my friend. <laughs> I made a lot of friends that way. Please try it my way. I promise you'll be nice to Harry and Alice. Okay, I'll try. You didn't say I had to be nice to the baby. <laughs> Honey, I don't like wearing your cousin's clothes. Got a funny shape. Roy, please sit down. Logan will be here any minute. And you already embarrassed me in the elevator. Oh, shucks, honey. I ain't never been in a room that moved before. I was just trying to find out who was making it go up and down. <laughs> Those people did look pretty funny with their hands up. <laughs> yeah, that's my gal. Mm -hmm. Hey, tell me something. What are all them fancy letters here on the wall with them big stamps left on them? Oh, those are Logan's diplomas. He got them for graduating from all these universities. And this is the school where we met. Oh, he's a brilliant man, Roy. <laughs> yeah, I'm a brilliant man. Wow, Betsy! Logan. Ah, oh, how are you? Like you do. Ah. Ah. Betsy, I assume that this is the patient you spoke about with the pent-up hostility. Hello, I'm Dr. Delp. Do you get these headaches often? It's amazing. It's uncanny. In the last three days, I have shown you 739 ink blots, and every single one of them has reminded you of your gun. I think about my gun a lot. What are you doing that for? I, t I, t uh, I only like Betsy to do that. You ain't one of them funny boys, are you? No. No, I'm your doctor. I was feeling the bumps in your skull. There's a new science called phrenology. What science mean? Hmm. Science is how we are going to break down your defense mechanisms. There is good in you, Mr. Slade, and by sheer science, I will find it. You are going to walk out of this office a well man. Now, come on. Sit down. Please. Sit nice. Let me have the picture of the gun. Good. Now, we have a lot of work to do. I'm going to say a word, and I want you to say the first word that comes into your head. My gun. I, no, 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 no. This time, I want you to say anything but your gun. Will you try? I'll try. Good. I'd... Okay. Mother. Nobody. Birthday. Alone. Apple. Worm. Puppies. Rabies. We got a lot of work to do. See my new dollhouse. Very good, Roy. Yeah, well, them W's is tricky. Now let's try some arithmetic. If you had six apples and your neighbor took three of them, what would you have? A dead neighbor and all six apples. Home. Hideout. Wanted. Poster. Bear. Teddy. What? Nothing. Next question. What did you say? I didn't say nothing! Mr. Slade, I must know what you just said! <gasps> Next question. Nose. Hurt? You bet. Oh. Try harder, Roy. Try to cry. If you can release one tear, it will help you. I don't know how to cry. Think. Think harder. Think about your lonely youth. No home, no friends, no warmth, no affection. Cactus in your diaper. <laughs> yes! 
Yes, there's a tear. <laughs> We're curing you. I don't want nobody to see me cry. Hey, that's my wallet. Well, you can't cure everything at once. I, if you touch my mother's picture, I'll kill you. Well, the main thing is that the music is really so nice, and, and the coffee is just right. Oh. What's cookies were? In a way, Roy, this party is for you. Logan says you're making real progress. Yeah, honey, them ink blots is starting to make sense to me. <laughs> oh, I'd better mingle with some of the other guests. Take that big fiddle out from between your legs. There are ladies present. But so I don't want no trouble. You just tuck it up under your chin the way a fiddle's supposed to be played. Now. Yes, sir. Right now, sir. <laughs> That's good. I can't do it. You can't. I can't. You must do it, Roy. This is the ultimate test. I want you to shed your weapons and walk across the room. I can't. I don't go nowhere without my guns. I even take a bath with my guns. You don't need them, Roy. Take them off and walk. Oh, Roy, try. Take off your weapons. Good. Is that everything? Anything else? Oh, it's a little one, huh? Okay. Is that all? Oh, my goodness. I got no weapons. Right. Walk. Here. Walk to me. Walk to me, Roy. Walk to me, Roy. Roy! I can't. I can't. I can't do it. Okay. You can do it. Try again. Try again, Roy. Come on, boy. Come on. Come on. Oh. <laughs> I can't do it. You can do it! I can't. Ah, <laughs> walk to me! Oh! Whoa, walk to me, you singing little coward! Walk! Ah! Ooh. <sighs> Who are you calling? A coward! Yeah! Ah! Roy! Roy! Roy, you did it! You walked without your guns! <laughs> I did. <laughs> I walked without my gun. All right. <laughs> I knew you could do it. I knew he was one of them funny boys. You, you, you may be a psychiatrist, but I think you're out of your mind. I can't hire a slave. I'm telling you he is ready for an honest job. No, he isn't, no. Please, Cousin Harry, I'm asking you as a member of your own family. Family, family, family. Now my in-laws want me to hire outlaws. I'm running a family business that depends on a customer's trust. How can I hire an outlaw? Do you think a man gets up in the morning and says, I need a new wagon? I think I'll go and see Jesse James. That's ridiculous, ridiculous. Or a guy says, the roof needs fixing, honey. Let's go down and get an honest estimate from Billy the Kid. It's ridiculous. Oh, he's not an outlaw anymore. Oh, no? No, he's not. Listen. Oh. If you give him a chance, you could be helping science. Who knows? Mm -hmm. They may even erect a statue in your honor. A statue? Why not? Of me? Yes. <sighs> nah, they'd never do it. They only put up statues to fancy generals on horses. They could have you standing on top of a giant shoe with an inscription that says, Harry Fern, man with a soul. Hmm? Yeah, uh, a, a big statue. Hey? Big, enormous. Right. <laughs> I would be here to watch him, wouldn't sure. I? Sure. For a shot at a statue. Okay. 
Oh, in the name of science, I thank you, and Sigmund Freud thanks you. <laughs> Don't let him thank me. Just let him come here and buy a pair of shoes. <laughs> uh, oh, it's, well, thank you. Anyway, very, very much. You won't be sorry. Oh, good luck. Ooh. Honey, what's this for? That's a shoehorn, dear. Well, well, if that's a horn, how come it don't go toot toot or honk? <laughs> Slade, that's a tool you use to get people's shoes on. Oh. Uh. See, he's really trying to learn. I can't see when he gets a on. You need a shoehorn. Okay, get that shoe on. It's on! It's on! <laughs> that sort of thing works real nice. <laughs> oh, you've got a lot to learn. All right, here's your first customer. You got it? You say hello, you sell him the shoes, and you get the price that's marked on the box. Okay, I got it. Go. Hello, here's good shoes. Give me money. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> Sit down, sir, please. Sit down. <laughs> Not so fast. You've got to sit on the stool and wait on him. Well, can't I sit in a chair and him on the stool? I don't want to leave my back to the door. Uh, no, you've got to sit on the stool. Okay. Cover me. We'll get that varmint in there. Oh, it's too tight. Oh. I'll get it to fit. What was wrong with that other pair? They, they were too loose. Oh. Oh. I'll fix that. Oh. Oh. There. Now that foot's going to swell up and fit that other pair real nice. Open toe, huh? You'll enjoy those. They're genuine cowhide. On the way home, you'll hear them mooing. <laughs> Roy, I've got to admit it. You're really getting the hang of it. I don't like that expression, but thanks. You seem to have your temper under control, but this afternoon is the big test. Our toughest customer. Ain't nobody tougher than Evil Roy. No, you haven't met Claire Beckendorf. These aren't the right color. I done showed you every color in the rainbow. Well, none of these shoes are, are the real me. Oh, let me try this pair again. <sighs> no, I guess not. Well, it wasn't a total loss. I have six pair out in the wagon that I want to bring back. <laughs> you know, Mrs. Beckendorf, you're a foolish woman. What? I mean, your feet are so beautiful, it don't matter what you wear, people will be looking at you. Oh. <laughs> shoes don't make you, you make the shoes. I've seen a lot of gals in my time, but you're prettier than the sun glistening on a rifle barrel. Oh, my dear. But you know that, that first pair wasn't bad, and these are just fine. And I'll take one of those, and one of those black pumps, I think, maybe. You know what I mean. You are marvelous. You finish up, I gotta go walk. Wash my mouth out. Betsy, I've been waiting for the right time to ask you this. I want you to be at my side from now on. I want you to share my life. Roy, you mean? That's right, honey. I'm asking you to be my mistress. Well, I, I gotta catch the stage, Roy. I, I'll be back tomorrow. Now, you know what to do. You close up in a couple of hours and take the cash to the bank. Roy, there's a lot riding on this. Our friendship, Betsy's love, my statue. <laughs> but we all trust you. Goodbye, son.
I'll trust you. We'll make it, Roy. You're a no-good thief. You'll never be anything else. I love you, Roy. We'll make it. Boss, you're me. You're a no-good thief. Oh, Roy, I'm so proud of the way you're doing. You did it, Roy. You walked right into me. What are you, crazy? What happens to the money after I give it to you? It goes into the vault, sir. You mean right in the vault? Nobody fondles it a little or plays with it or maybe winks at the president or lights a cigar with it? Oh, heavens no. You are cured of meanness. Boss, you're mean. You'll never be anything else. <laughs> Hands up. Hands up, everybody! <laughs> give me my money back. In fact, give me everybody's money back! <laughs> Roy, I'm so proud of the way you're doing. Shut up! I didn't say anything. <laughs> Is that you, Roy? I tried, honey. I tried, but I just can't do it. This straight life ain't for me. It's too boring. My idea of a nine to five job is nine men robbing five men. But I won't live this way. I won't live this way. No, you're not stealing the baby piggy bank. Honey, when I'm on a mean streak, I'm on a mean streak. This ain't goodbye. Don't do anything I wouldn't do. This time, this time we shall be ready for him, hey, Custer? <laughs> How you gonna get ready, Oak? By not using you, you flimp. Once again, I've called for Bing Bell. Is that the door? And this time I've offered something more interesting than money. No, 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 money. Much more interesting than money. I've investigated the files of Western Express. And I found out the weakness of Marshall Bell. This time we're going to really bring Evil Roy Slade down to his knees. And I will prove to the entire world that I am in charge of Western Express. Who are you? Ain't this a train to Nogales? No, 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 no train to Nogales. This is my train. It's my private train. And what are you two doing on it? Go on, get off. Go on, hurry. Off, out. You hear? Off, out. Uh, don't worry, honey. Maybe we don't have our own train. But at least we got all our fingers. When I reach my little cabin, that home, sweet home of mine. Mr. Bing, Mr. Bing, Bingy. Another message from Western Express to Mr. Bing Bell. Before you burn this note, look at the photo of the beautiful girl enclosed in the accompanying envelope. This is evil Roy Slade's girlfriend, Betsy Potter. If Slade was disposed of, you would have this damsel for your very own. Oh, I like to grab her in moonlight on Ganges. Torhan, get my things. I'm hitting the trail again. Oh, you make Turan so happy. Oh. <laughs> that, you like magic, huh? Better than cleaning up. Here are your famous boots, huh? Famous boots. 
And here is your beautiful buckle and your famous silver spurs and the little socks and your moth balls. Oh, you do not need moth balls. You're not going to shoot a moth. <laughs> Turhan make joke. Turhan so excited. And here is your famous hat with the brim full of goodness and the little crease for your honest head. And oh, here, here is the weapon that won the West. I call you two peanuts and I raise you a cashew. Hey, yeah. Sure is slow around here without the boss. I'm gonna have to sell my tattoo. Boy, I'm hungry. A nice thick steak. That sure would be a sight for sore eye. I'm seriously considering going back to the ministry. At least I got free wine. Boss! Boss! boss. Hey, you! All right, boys. Boss! Borrow as much as you need to lose steadily to me for a couple of hours. Boss! 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 My own gang's turned into funny boys. Oh, oh no, you no. <laughs> don't have to have your back. Now, cow, to go long, you can don't hold to go to walk a donk, bounce your gong, lip a tongue, cheek, a walk a do con, kick at your gong, a donk, a wow. Bing Bell is my name. Catching crooks is my game. I love to see him strung up high. Don't even ask me why, I just know that I yuck, 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 so good for gong, a donk, a donk, a ching, a bone. Catching crooks is my game. Lip a tall cheek, a wack a do, con, kick a chugong, a donk, a wow. Well, hello, Mr. Ugly. <laughs> hello, squirrel. Hello, everybody. Hello, mommy nature. <laughs> Bing Bell is my name. Catching crooks is my game. Chukonk, a ding, a conk. Who are you looking at? Ow! Oh, look out! I love to shoot. I love to hoot. I love to sing. I love to... Leave a Roy, look out, look out. Roy loves his gun, 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 but now he's going to take it away. Mr. Bell, I can't tell you how happy we all are that you're finally here with us. Let Flossie tell me. He even got my name right. Oh, this man has got a mind. Marshal, I'm putting you in complete charge. You're going to have a complete free hand. Mm, that's a good idea. My nephew here, Clifford, he'll assist you in any way he can. I'm ready, Marshal Bill. I'll get you anything you need. Gatlin guns, fire bombs, dynamite. Oh, no, son, no, no. You give me some lilac water. Lilac water? Two pounds of chocolate. Soft center. Soft? Some flowers. Wait, hold, wait. Pretty flowers. Hold, I will wait a minute. Flowers. Wait, don't, don't, don't. Soft centered chocolates. I mean, flowers. What, what on earth are you talking about? <laughs> Mr. Stool, this is what I'm talking about. Ah, it's enough to make a man wish he had all his fingers again. Foolishness like this is for after Slade hangs. Mr. Stool, I don't tell you how to run your petty little delivery service. Don't you tell me how to catch criminals. Yes, sir. I've had over 50 men hung, all outlaws. And I'll tell you right now, the best way to a man's neck is through his girlfriend's heart. You never were too good at hiding your feelings. Oh, we almost made it, Ma. Roy almost went straight. Now he's out there robbing again. Honey, it never would have worked. The man was rotten. I know rotten. Your lazy pa taught me rotten. May rest in peace. Ma, Pa isn't dead. Why do you always say rest in peace? Wherever your Pa is, he's resting. I'm loping along, just singing my song. Singing my song. I'm loping along. I love to loaf while I'm singing my song. And loping along, easy snow. My, my. What have we got here? Two pretty ladies standing next to each other. One is the daughter, the other's a mother. <laughs> Hi, ladies. Howdy. I hope I didn't startle you, ma'am. Oh, no, that was real nice singing. Thank you, ma'am, with just something I whipped up. I like to sing while I'm loping along. It keeps my mind off the smell of the horse. Well, I liked it fine. Hmm, thank you. Oh, I'm Maggie Potter. This is my daughter. Maggie? Betsy. 
Betsy, huh? <laughs> mm. Hi, Betsy. Mm, Mr. Uh... Bing Bell. Oh, I'll get the door. No, no, that's my name. Say, I heard of you. You're that famous marshal that hung 40 outlaws. I'm trying to forget that, ma'am. And it was 50. Marshal? Well, if you came here looking for Roy Slade, you came to the wrong place. That's, That's all right, ma'am. I'm retired now. Yeah, I'm trying to forget all that. No, I just want to sing along and lope along and ride the range and, and live a life of peace. You talk pretty as a preacher. <laughs> Thank you, ma'am. Will you stay for dinner? I would love to stay for dinner, if it's all right with Betsy. Well, I hope you're not mad at me for accusing you. No, ma'am, I don't hold no grudges. I'm too good for that. That's a lovely guitar. Do you always keep it with you? <laughs> Everywhere I go. Ever since that fateful day, it saved my life. Saved your life? Yeah. I was sitting in the Crystal Palace that's just out of Willow Run, and a bad man shot me. I was wearing my guitar, and it slowed down the bullet. Saved my life. I've always kept this guitar as a memento. That's nice. I kept the bullet as a memento, too. And this is the gun the fellow used when he shot me. I kept that as a memento, too. I got the chair I was sitting in and the glass I was drinking from. I was so busy gathering mementos, I almost bled to death. Well, it's nice you're so sentimental. Oh, yes, I'm very sentimental when it comes to me. I'd like to sing a song for you. Oh, I'd love it. There once was a girl named Betsy. <gasps> oh, I'm sorry, Betsy. You see, I forgot to put on the safety catch. doing great this month. The boss ain't happy. Oh, he's just brooding over his lost love. Loves me? She loves me now. She loves me? She loves me now. Hey, Evil Roy! Hey, Roy! Hey, fuck, where's the boss? Hold that. Hey, Evil Roy, I saw something in the paper while I was in town. Don't you ought to see it. Yeah? What's it say? Well, uh, but you should read it yourself. I, I give it. I can't read unless it says, see my new dollhouse. Don't say that nowhere. Yeah, you read it. But you should yourself. Read it! You read? You read. Huh? You read. I read. Uh, Mrs. Aggie Potter announces the marriage of her daughter, Betsy to Mr. Bingham Bell, singing marshal of San Francisco. The wedding ceremony at Little Church. Boys. Where'll I wear? It's formal. Black tie and guns. <laughs> I always loved weddings. Until I got married. You know, I married your pa in this dress. That was the last time he took me out. Uh-huh. Honey, you still thinking about that evil Roy Slay? You don't want to throw your life away. He ain't good for nothing. 
except kissing. From what I saw, Marshal Bell kissed you pretty good. Yes, but I wish he'd take his guitar off when he kisses me. I get string marks all over my chest. Oh. Is my tie on crooked, Unc? It's perfect. Matches your head. Tell me evil Roy Slade knows about this here wedding, don't he? <laughs> huh? Of course he knows. Yeah. Why do you think I put Betsy's picture in the newspaper? Normally, I'd use my own. <laughs> He'll be there. And when he does, my deputies, or rather my ushers, will be there waiting. <laughs> all right, boy, you all know the plan. As soon as the preacher gets to that part where he says, does anybody object? And a man stands up and says, yes. You come out shooting. Speaking of shooting, let me have my guitar. Oh, oh, guitar. Guitar. Quickly, quickly, quickly. Oh, excuse me. I want to see if it's loaded. Ha <laughs> ha! <laughs> First wedding in history with a groom carry the shotgun. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up. Gosh. Betsy is pretty, but she sure got some ugly friends. play my own wedding. Here comes the groom, lighting up the room. I don't need no light bulb. Oh, it's a Potter and Bing Bell. Somebody at the door? That's his name. Betsy, do you take this here melodious marshal to be your lawful wedded husband? I do. No, you don't. <laughs> <laughs> now look what you've done to my bride to be. You mean my bride to be, don't you, Ding Dong? Any last songs you'd like to sing? If anybody's gonna die, Slade, it's gonna be you, because you have just stepped into my brilliant trap. How do you figure that, Mr. Showbiz? I got you covered. The best man has got you covered. Maid of Honor's got your best man covered. The ushers have got your Maid of Honor covered. My bridesmaids have got your ushers covered. The caterer's got your bride maids covered. Now, wait a minute. You got ushers, I got bridesmaids. Who's got the organist? She's neutral. That that gives me five to uh no, no, uh I'm all confused. I... Would everybody on the marshal's side please raise your hands? Good, honey. <laughs> Come on, Betsy. <laughs> <laughs>
That's the mother of the bride. They always cry at wedding. Oh, thanks. What happened? You just had the biggest shotgun wedding in history, honey. Makes you want to spit. What are we gonna do? Jump it? Yep. But Roy, I was only kidding. Honey, don't ever kid a kidder. This horse will never make it. He's gonna make it. I grew up with Thana Mules. Horse? You're going to jump that gorge. If and you make it, I'm going to introduce you to a sexy Palomino mare. And if and you don't make it, some little boy is going to use you to help glue his stamps in his stamp book. You got that? Now we're going to make that gorge. Here we go. Ha! See, honey? Man, a mule will do anything for you if he loves you. <laughs> Women, they always faint when the fun starts. Ah, 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 we'll never make it across. Ah, if Slate can make it, we can make it. Ah, five hundred dollars, five hundred dollars to any man who can jump this here river. Five hundred, five hundred dollars. Next. Saved a thousand dollars. All right, next. Come on, Clifford. Get over there. Get him going, Clifford. Help me, mommy. <sighs> Clifford, he always did make a fuss. All right, everybody, across. Let's go. Come on, hurry up. <laughs> Wake up, little dumpling. Open your eyes, sweet buttercup. Time to drop your curly locks and grab your socks. Rise and shine, darling. Ah! We fell in the river! No, honey, no. We made it. I was just waking you up. Evil Roy Slade, you ruined my wedding. Oh, honey, I couldn't let you marry that singing sissy. I love you. Well, you just up and dragged me away. Well, we went to the wedding, just didn't have time to stay for the reception. <laughs> I guess you do care for me a little to go to all that trouble. I sure do, honey. And you know you love me. We an item. Oh, Roy, we almost made it in Boston. I don't belong in Boston. I belong here where the robin is easy. You'll never understand. I really think the best thing is for us to just say goodbye and remember all the good times we've had. Oh, Betsy. I mean it. Oh, Bet. All right. I tell you what. You give me a goodbye kiss, and I give you a solemn oath to let you go. letting you go. Oh, you need love so badly. But right now, the posse's after you. Nah, ain't no man other than even Roy Slade got enough guts to jump that gorge. <laughs> I think you wanted to build that 
clubhouse. I mean, this place, I just love it. Oh, oh He's got a stick there. to it, Crawley, that you got to admire. Oh, rip on oh. I love it, love it, love it. Sleep there, love it. Chicon, 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 chicon. Take me home, I'm getting weary. Stay away from my home. Drop it, Mr. Slade. He's got you covered, Roy. That's right. Talent will out. How'd you get across that gorge? I took another route. I don't like traveling with a posse. Gets my clothes dusty. Oh, don't take him in, Bing. I promise I'll marry you if you don't. Sorry, Betsy, but I used the wedding part to lure Slade out of his hiding. You mean you courted me just so you could ambush Roy? Now, don't get mad, Betsy. You can keep all the wedding gifts. If anybody gave cash, we'll split it. Betsy gets the cash. You keep all them silver candy dishes. <laughs> Slade, you giving me trouble for the last time. The reward says dead or alive. How you want to go? E sharp? B flat. Hmm? Betsy. You were lying every time you kissed me. And I don't like someone to take my lips lightly. <laughs> Drop that guitar, pretty tonsils. Excuse me, ma'am. Don't kill him, Roy. I ain't gonna kill him. I'm gonna do something a lot meaner. <laughs> What's that? I'm gonna shoot this guitar full of lead. No. No, Slade, no. No, 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 not, not, not my guitar, Slade. No, it's the only thing I ever loved, Slade. Except me. Oops. Look at this. Bing Bell is my name. Kid, look what you did, Slade. You got my outfit all dirty and it ain't nice, Slade. Water. I must have water. My gloves are filthy. Catching crooks is my game. <laughs> I love to hang them up high. I'd like to go clean, you see. Always show me on my mind. It's late. You clean up the place. It's filthy. Hum. 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 He's a born showman. All my life, I tried to shoot and dress sharp. Oh, now I'm going to wear a sheet and a golden heart. He's gone. You sure he ain't got another chorus in him? Pongong, kichi, kamong, katong, kong, bataha, kachu, kui. Chonghong, kapap, takong, ki, chow, kukahong, kapiha, kui. I think I have to kill that guitar or shut him up. Mm -hmm. Slade! We got you trapped! Come out of there with your hands up! I'll give you three minutes! How come you're giving them three minutes, huh? We need that time for our guns to dry. Careful, Long. He may try to reach behind his back again. Now you keep that hanky high! It's Betsy Potter! Yes. I'm not letting Roy fall into your unjust hands again. Marshal Bell is dead in there. Oh, it was an accident, but I know you'll blame Roy. Hunk! Slade murdered the Marshal! What did I tell you? Someday we just gotta string up that Slade. By his neck. Mr. Stool, you must understand that you don't fight violence with violence. You fight it with peace and teach it to be nonviolent. What's that? Your Miss Frontier acceptance speech? I'm searching for an outlaw, Roy Slade. Where can he be? He's out there in the desert someplace, back where he started. But he'll come back to me. Don't be too all fire sure of that. I'm sure. And when he does, I'm dedicating my life to turning evil Roy Slade into a good man. And 
and I'm dedicating my life to turning evil Roy Slade into a dead man. Evil Roy Slade, mean and petty. And so evil Roy swapped clothes with Betsy and once again roamed the West. Yeah, there are many outlaws and many legends, but there's only one evil Roy Slade, a man who could strike fear into every heart. Even dress like one of them funny boys. Evil Roy Slade, rotten and raunchy. Crime pays for no man save evil Roy.